In July, in the Maimansingh area of East Pakistan, the winds blow from the southwest, bringing rain, covering the land, bringing life. Rice to eat, jute to sell, but not enough. In Pakistan, in one half the world, even the best harvest does not rid the land of hunger. There are more bushels of rice now, but there are even more mouths to feed. The hungry world today could become a starving world tomorrow, unless this Pakistani farmer and millions like him can be helped to produce enough to eat, enough to sell, enough to buy tools, enough to raise children who will not die from curable disease, enough to carry a man into a world where the land and the traditions of the land do not make slaves of men. Five years ago, Ben R. Ferguson, Colorado rancher, farmer, teacher, businessman, came to the Maimansingh district of East Pakistan as an agricultural advisor with the American Foreign Aid Program. How are you? Okay. Huh? The TAO. Back home in Colorado, I learned that agriculture is not just planting and harvesting. It's a way of living, a way people have to get along. I knew if I was going to accomplish anything with the farmers, I would first have to understand how they handle their problems. So we came to meetings like this, called Union Council meetings, where farmers representing many villages were supposed to be working out their problems. But we found the farmers were not getting the help that they needed, and they didn't seem to be willing to help themselves. I came to East Pakistan from America at the request of the East Pakistan government. I want to point out a few things that we must do in each union to bring us up to a surplus in rice where everyone is well fed and we can have some surplus rice with which to export and to sell. How do we do that? We have found out with over 50,000 demonstrations. It's easier now than when this program was just beginning. We've had demonstrations by the thousands to prove to farmers that we can increase rice production, almost double it. We've simply got to get him to believe that he can do it. No one has to convince him that he needs to. You can do it or not. No, no one is forcing you to do it. You're doing it only because you want to help yourself in all of the phases of rural life and rural living. But everyone must remember, this program is for you. It's not for these people, and it's not for me, but it's for you. And you'll have to make your decision today. You can have a discussion when these gentlemen get through whether you want to proceed and participate in program building work. Thank you very much. <coughs> Since he began, Ben Ferguson has worked closely with his Pakistani counterpart, the district agricultural officer in Maimansingh, Mr. Saiful Huck. They call their work program building. At a first meeting like this, we've got to overcome their skepticism. They'll ask if we're here to raise their taxes or to take away their land. We've got to get them to ask why they can't produce enough rice to fill their stomachs, why they can't read or write, why two out of three babies die before they're five years old. And most important question of all, can this program or any program 
change the way of life which has existed unchanged for generations. In order to find the root of the skepticism, to find out what the problems really were, my counterparts and I went to the villages. We wanted to know why this nation could not feed itself, why most farmers spent more than they were able to earn and remained forever in debt. Bananas. That's very cheap, isn't it? Yep. We wanted to know why they could produce only 300 eggs a day to feed 15,000 people. We found that when we talked to the farmers that they didn't even know how much rice they produced. They didn't know why they were sick one third of the time. Most farmers couldn't even remember when their last child died or why. We had to get them to begin to think about their problems or they'd never begin to find the solutions. <laughs> Now, let's find out from Mr. Hossein what he thinks his greatest problem is that faces him now. Eventually, he'll either lose his land or have to increase his income. Uh, then, if, the then if he gets irrigation, yes, he will it. use fertilizer, yes, yes. line yes, sow, yes, he'll do it. weed and mulch, yes, yes. preventative plant protection. Preventing does that. Yeah. Well, that's yes. good. Yes, yes. Glad yes. to hear you say that. The, the way it stands now, he has lost four cattle over a period of 15 days. Yeah. When did it die, Chairman Saeb? Yesterday? Yeah. Died yesterday. Hmm? Four. 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 No. He has got only one and he is just depressed. He cannot do anything, any farming. He he needs more bullocks yes, to yes. replace these. Uh, I would like to offer a suggestion. I think if this gentleman will go to the manager of the ADB mm. and tell him <coughs> what has happened, mm that they have a contingency clause. Oh. Uh, we found that when the farmer didn't know answers, he got to thinking. He realized there were a lot of things he didn't know about himself. He began to think about his whole way of life, a way of life that has taken generations to evolve. And for the first time, it struck him that he might be able to change it. Remember to, to hold your plant down by the root. Hold it down. That's right. When AID hired me, my job description called for me to help train 1,200 agricultural extension agents. The first thing that Saiful Huck and I learned was that we had to move their training out of the classroom. These fellows had to be able to work in the mud with the farmers. Come on, let's move fast. Let's get it in quickly, quickly. Put it even with your markers here. Right down here. They had to show that fertilizer, row planting, and pesticides made sense in a little village field and not just in some government farm miles away. I guess I was a little impatient. <laughs> You're welcome. All right. Everybody finished? Let's move. Where, where are all the knives? I don't have anyone. I'm going to have to help cut a little here. Oh, you want to help? Well, sure. Uh, we have to do the same thing we ask everybody else to do. Oh, we do it, we do it. We were talking about rice planting and insecticides and increased production and how American aid might help. But we were talking about a larger idea, too, about how men could help themselves by working together to help one another. Sifel, you better move over a little because I really take a swath when I cut here. You might lose an arm or a leg, yeah, or a finger. 
I can tell the ones that are real farmers and the ones that have never done any work. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's some of each. Some of each, but mostly the farmers. The farmers, though, you can pick out. These other fellas, some of them don't even know how to cut grain. Yes, yes. Uh, they have just come. They're worse than you and I. Yes. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five. Five, six, eight, seven, eight. 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 So it'll average about 80. 80. <laughs> Now, we have here quite a few left, huh? Yeah, quite a few. Quite, quite a few kernels left. left on here. Now, let's take this and run it with the paddle thrasher and see how much more we can get off. No, no, no. This way. Well, no, I know how to do that. Now, you see, there isn't a kernel left. A hundred percent, cent percent. Yeah. All right, let's, let's, op let's open this up then like this. The techniques and the tools we began with are simple but effective. This machine costs only a few dollars, yet it can get twice as many grains from a sheaf of rice, possibly the difference between hunger and a decent diet. The average farmer may still have trouble seeing it, but when he can accept even a small change like this, the whole pattern begins to change. Now, you see, there's a simple technique to this. Hold on tight here. It just, it just needs to be cut. The change comes not only in the tools they use, but in the way they think, and the very approach to their problems. Meetings are no longer just idle chatter and talk. They've come together now to find solutions. This union council has just taken its first hard look at its problems. For the last three months, they've gone into every village, every home, asking questions. You have had your initial meeting, have decided that you wish to take up program building, and now you have completed your survey. Is that right? Yeah. The reconnaissance survey has been <coughs> completed on how many farmers? How many farmers? How many farmers? 2025. 2025 farms have been surveyed. We know now pretty well what our problems are. Now I would like to ask these people what they intend to do about it. Finally, the questions have been asked. The problems have been established. How do they think we can solve these problems? Out of this meeting, the subcommittees will be formed to work on every phase of rural living. Food production, animal husbandry, health, education, credit, and recreation. They know it's not enough to show a farmer how to plant rice if he's too sick to do it. It's not enough to show him how to use equipment or fertilizer if he can't pay for it. They'll argue now over what's important and how to do it. But the old skepticism is gone. I think the most important step in the pattern of self-help is when my Pakistani counterpart takes full charge. I would like to take... I've worked with Saiful a long time, and I know he's more than able. And sometimes I think that if I left now, I'd hardly be missed. 
except maybe for friendship's sake. We're a long way now from where we began, wondering if the farmer would help himself, if he'd accept the program, if he'd accept us. When we first came to visit, they didn't even offer us a three-legged stool to sit on. Now it's hard to get away. Yeah, I, I will request you to have a cup of tea. Oh, we, we should go. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> well, do you think we have time? Yes, yes. we can have for ten minutes. But then we no, five minutes it request, five minutes. Five minutes. Not more than five minutes. Well, that's it. Yes. I know oh, you're yes, five minutes. Just going to <laughs> eleven. Okay, okay, but we must hurry. When they invite me to tea, it's not just food, but hospitality they're serving. So I can't refuse, even though I'm not hungry. These farmers probably haven't had anything but rice to eat for six months. When they take what little money they have to buy some fruit and sweet meats, the simple cup of tea becomes a pretty important thing. After tea, we rush over to the line sowing demonstration. The farmers on the crop subcommittee are showing other farmers what months before we had shown them. And of course, we cannot leave without that simple cup of tea. You say, oh, I've had tea before. I don't care for any. He says, you don't like my food and hospitality? He's hurt. So you have a simple cup of tea. Papaya nicely peeled with a few green flies buzzing around it or sweet meats like chum chum or rasagula with simple syrup gently squeezed out. Top it off with a cookie or banana. That is a simple cup of tea. Gentlemen, as usual, we're running behind. We're always, you said five minutes to spend 30. But we enjoyed it very much. I say we're in a hurry to get to the demonstration by the fishery subcommittee, but they insist I test my fishing skill in a nearby rice paddy. I don't know why in the hell I'm doing this. We arrive, of course, a little late for the fisheries demonstration, but this doesn't bother any of the subcommittee. They are showing off what they'd learned about fish production. Three years ago, they couldn't even get 70 pounds of fish out of this pond. Now they'll pull out over a ton. And again, we'll have to have a simple cup of tea. But before we do, we must stop to see a farmer who had borrowed money to develop his farm through the credit and finance subcommittee. You know, three years ago, he might have gone to the money lender, paid 100% or more interest, and be forever in debt. This loan has enabled him to double his income in one year. I would like to ask him, does he have many, many neighbors come here and look at this? Almost all the farmers came and looked to his garden, and by seeing these two farmers have already started two gardens. Two have started. Two have started. Two have started. By now we're an hour late. Then we have 12 miles to go to the next village where we'll have lunch. This is really our fourth meal of the day. Curried chicken, curried fish, curried goat. It's delicious. And I'd insult them if I didn't eat, so I eat. After lunch, we went to the mass immunization program set up by the Animal Husbandry Subcommittee. So you, you had two or three cases of anthrax, of anthrax and uh, you immediately vaccinated everything. Yes. By four o'clock, we've had five meals. But in the next village, the chairman of the Union Council insists that before going to the Hadoodoo game set up by the Recreational Subcommittee, we have a simple cup of tea. 
For the farmer, this is the only recreation he has. It requires no ball or bat, no equipment of any kind. They can't afford any. Kaji Kanda winning? Yeah. Kajir Kanda, uh, team captain, I wish to congratulate you and your team on your fine performance this evening. And I wish on behalf of the Recreation Subcommittee of Full Poor Union Program Building, I wish to present you with this trophy. I wish to also congratulate you and your team for a fine performance and I wish to present you the consolation prize. By six o'clock, the game was over. Again, the cultivators went out of their way to provide us with curried beef, curried chicken, curried fish before we visited the night schools, organized by the educational subcommittee. Okay, okay. Wouldn't that be good? Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, no, no, basie, basie, thank you. All right, one more. Hell, I don't know. Well, you have to get some. Well, you have to get some. The best hope of this nation lies in the education of the children. How many children does this man have? But only three out of ten have the opportunity to attend day school. So they come to the adult night schools with their fathers. These farmers have spent 12 or more hours working in the field. They come to a school built with their own hands, reading books they have paid for. And they're proud. By the end of the day, I've had 14 meals in 14 different villages and 14 chances to break down existing barriers of aloofness and skepticism, 14 chances of becoming more closely associated with their problems and desires. But I can't get over the irony of accepting all of this food and hospitality in a land where people go to bed hungry. I'd like to see how that, this year we can do something. You get up wondering whether you're really making a dent in the problems. But it doesn't take you long to get back into the enthusiasm of the thing when you see their response, what they're trying to do to help themselves. Now, I... <coughs> I think we should look at the map. The farmers of this union have called this meeting because they face a crisis. A faulty embankment has flooded 6,000 acres of highly productive land. These people have been without sufficient food since the land was flooded. These people are just a little excited over this, aren't they? Because this is their death and life question, yes. life and death question. They're at a point of starvation if this thing isn't corrected. A few years ago, these people wouldn't have come together to solve their problems. But they've learned a new way of thinking. They're willing to act. Voices which were silent speak out now. Hands once tied to a plow now point to a plan to drain and reclaim this land. But they feel they need government help. There is a point at which men must work to solve their own problems. But there is a point at which greater resources, local, national, or international, must be brought in. At this moment, government help is important. But it is also important that these people go as far as they can on their own.
Now, I, I would like to ask you gentlemen a question. In case we cannot get money from WABTA or from <coughs> Works Program to re-excavate the Kumara Cull and install a sluice gate, would you people all be ready to join hands and do it ourselves? Very good. Thank you very much. They all accept it. All accept. Well, should we proceed now, yes, Mr. Huck? Yes, sir. It's a small victory for only a handful of the 60 million people in East Pakistan. But progress is contagious. The extension workers we have trained are now working in each of the 4,000 unions, affecting 60,000 villages. Progress is contagious, but it's not automatic. When we go to a new union, we really have to begin all over again. And we will, after we've had a simple cup of tea. The farmers listen as one man sings of a life they know and a man they know, Ben Ferguson. O oh, people of the land, the voice is singing, awake. Let your strength drive the plow down endless furrows. No longer shall labor yield a harvest of hunger. The light of learning is now within reach. Awake. Sow the seeds of ample tomorrows, now while there is time. While there is time, in Pakistan, in countries of Asia, Latin America, and Africa, men like Ben Ferguson work with men like Seifel Huck to help a billion farmers unlock the abundance of their land, to make foreign aid work to remake the world of the farmer. Crops, roads, health, education, and the well-being of the farmer's nation the traditions of the land will continue, but change will come too, to those who labor through long days into the darkness toward the promise of ample tomorrows. Pakistan <laughs> Tu ya mar sambhal re 